Even all, welcome back to Starbound. Right, bit of a problem. We've had to redo our character yet again, but I'm reassured this is the last time we have to do this. So um, I thought I'd take you through the character creation screen. Um, and yes, I know it looks like an iPad game for you know 14 year old girls to go and talk about shopping, shoes, and hair. But I promise you, it, it's not. <laughs> it really isn't. It's a it's a very good procedurally generated 2D exploration game. Um, and I find myself having to defend it continually lately because I think a lot of people, they like the look of it, but I think they just, they're very dismissive of it. And I'll tell you what, Terraria was exactly the same. When I first saw Terraria, I, uh, as I think a video on YouTube, I remember thinking, ooh, no, that doesn't look good. That does not, it's not my thing. Then somebody said, oh, but it's like Minecraft. And I was playing Minecraft at the time and just, and I thought, do you know what? It's only like a fiver. So I thought, why not? And I bought it. And then about two months of my life just disappeared. And that shows you how good these games can be is because it's the depth, it's the exploration, it's the crafting, it's the, um, you know, it, it's just the challenge of the game that I think make it quite cool. Anyway, so we have our characters here and I've selected Glitch again. I didn't go for the weird avian fish flying men. I didn't go for the fish dudes, lizards dudes, or even the ape dudes, um, or even humans dudes. I actually went for the robot again because I quite like the Glitch. I think the robot's kind of funny. And I started again from scratch, but within probably, I don't know, 10 minutes, I was um, in this base and I had found, quote, a pulse rifle from aliens. Pretty chill, hey? That is, this is certainly the beauty of the game is that it's like DayZ in a way. Part of the appeal of DayZ is finding loot and then using loot. Um, but your biggest fear in that is that you lose it, obviously, because you get shot, you die, you lose it. Um, in Starbound, it's obviously less of an issue, but when they reset your character, you think, oh, God, I had such a good gun, I had such a good sword, whatever it may be. Um, but fear not, I think this is where this game really comes in because the, the reality is, is if you go and explore, you will find stuff and it could be something really good, really bad, really awesome, whatever. And I think just coming across a pulse rifle this early on in the game is pretty cool. And it's just because I found a base. You know, you can find a prison with loads of really good um, armor and you can find a a village that sells, I don't know, guns. I actually came across a floating pirate ship which was anchored on a moon that was selling uh, sniper rifles. So, you know, don't worry too much about it if um, if you're worried about that kind of thing. You know, character wipes are annoying, but the reality is, is there's no real kind of progression here other than materials and possession progression, if that makes sense. Um, but I'm loving it. I'm loving everything about the process behind this game. And let me let me share with you something because one of the very first games, and I may have mentioned this before, one of the very first games I really got into was a game called Dungeon Master. And this is, when I say get into, I mean, I learned everything about it. Literally everything this game did, the mechanics of it, how it worked, the trade-off between stamina, dexterity, um, strength, health, you name it, I learned it all. Okay. Now, I'm not a particularly mathematical chap, but what I would say is I learned certainly the, you know, almost like the, the equations, you know what I mean? So, you know, if you've got half stamina, that means your health reduces at, at four times the rate, that kind of thing. Um, and I learned all of these kind of little secret tri uh, tricky things. And um, before long, I had figured out that if I ran this fit with this staff, that set of armor, blah, 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 then I would be, I would literally be, you know, God's left wing. And I was, and I was able to pretty much roll around the dungeon continually because I managed to fool the game as well so the game couldn't finish. So I could just pretty much go through all 12 levels, beating the living shit out of anybody who got in my way. And that was fun. I remember just literally locking, you know, probably, you know not even logging on, loading the game from my discs, lol and um, playing this game continually and just beating the hell out of people then turning it off and doing that for weeks um, and it was fun it was really good fun I must admit and um, what they built within the game was a very kind of they, they obviously knew that people would try and do this so they built many many levels into the game that if you played the game through normally you'd maybe reach level I don't know 10 for example but they put 100 levels into the game and that was the beauty of it because it just kept going and going another game like this was a game called Captive which again probably you know post in the comments if you remember Captive nobody seems to remember it except bloody me um, and I've actually still got this game I play it on my work laptop when no one's looking because it's um, it's a really old game again 
Um, and it's exactly in the style of Dungeon Master, but it's based in the future. So you're robots with guns and da 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 da. Um, but this game was also procedurally generated, very much like Starbound. I think this is why maybe I like Starbound, because it reminds me of Captive. Um, but Captive was something where, you know, if you wanted to, you had 10 levels, and at the end of the 10th level, you rescued yourself. Long story. Um, and then after the end of, te of those 10 levels, the game then basically said, go on then, do, do levels 11 to uh, 20. And you'd be like, go on then, I'll do that. And the game got harder, the bosses got harder, etc. And the guns got better, etc., etc. Um, at the end of level 20, you rescue yourself again. And then it says, go on then, do level 21 to 30. And you're like, uh, go on then, I'll do that. And before you know it, you're on level 14,421. And you're then going for 14,230. And you think to yourself, does this game ever end? And the answer is no. It doesn't. It's like a lead. It's been procedurally generated with a very clever algorithm that just continually runs the game. And Starbound isn't a million miles away from this. There is, in theory, I believe, an infinite number of worlds, maybe not, but there will be probably at some point, where you will just have a continual progression of worlds and you'll keep going. Um, and I like that. I think that's pretty cool. Starbound isn't like that yet. I think obviously there are a limited number of worlds, but it's just nice to feel that there is this massive, you know, world or universe out there that you can pretty much go and piss about in. Um, and I think that's missing from a lot of games now. Too often now, it's it's even the sandboxes are so restricted. They have a set of rules that you have to follow that makes sandboxes very difficult. And multiplayer online games have a little bit to blame for this because a lot of multiplayer online games, I think lately, have become a, a, a kind, because there's so many people trying to cheat the system, cheat and get money and cheat and do this, that I think a lot of the time people have, uh, the games designers rather, have just locked everything down so it, it just becomes a little bit kind of disappointing, if you like, um, because they, they don't give you this kind of freedom that you once had. Um, anyway, so there we go. Oh, what a load of bollocks that was. Anyway, so I think in terms of like Starbound, it does have that feeling of the very early pioneering games like Elite, certainly like uh, Captive, and, and hence why I mention it. And I think um, you won't go too far wrong with it. But it also has modern in, you know, input. It has a Minecraft feel to it. So here I'm crafting and doing all my smelting. Um, and you've picked up all this loot, so you can basically then say, well, what do I want from this loot? What's good? What's bad? Um, and so on. So I think the game really does reward the player who wants to build something cool has a really kind of good idea but also wants the freedom to pretty much just go and explore what they want and i think if you could be self-motivated to go and explore you will you will love this game um incredibly because it does give you an incredible you know impetus to do something interesting i would also say that one of the exciting things about this game is that um, you can base build as well and we do that probably in the next video and you'll see what i mean because um i certainly went and, and went to town and built my wonderful uh, you know, Castle of Solitude for Pyrex and um, I ended up building something that just got wiped out by meteorites so you've got that to look forward to next time hope you enjoyed that, see you next time <laughs>